For patients with stable ischemic heart disease, revascularization is sometimes an option, and the appropriate use criteria kind of lay out the parameters for uh, some of its use. I'm here with Manesh Patel from Duke Cl Clinical Research Institute, one of my favorite places, and we're talking about an editorial you have coming up in uh, Jack, and it's the appropriate use criteria to reduce underuse and overuse, striking the right balance. We've heard some of the, the discussion about uh, overuse. Underutilization is also an issue. So let's first about, talk about the paper that you're commenting on in the editorial. Well, I think it's an absolutely critical paper. And, uh, you know, it, it, many people have said the appropriate use criteria are important, but they haven't been validated. Are there data that they can affect patient outcomes? Right. And, you know, many of, many of our practice guidelines have gone through this process. So it's important to recognize what the authors, Co et al. from Ontario, Canada, and that area did. They took the existing appropriate use criteria, which are for both stable ischemic heart disease, but also acute coronary syndromes, and reviewed retrospectively the angiograms that went through the health system. And they broke them into uh, angiograms and revascularizations uh, based on the angiograms that would have been inappropriate, right. uncertain, or appropriate. And what they found was interesting. The patients who had an appropriate reason to get a revascularization, so they had enough CAD burden, symptoms, ischemia, et cetera, only 65% of those patients actually got a revascularization procedure, PCI or cabbage. And about 40% of the revascularizations that occurred in the inappropriate group they also looked at. So there were some patients in the inappropriate category that got revascularization. Uh, and maybe a lot of patients, up to 40%, 35% in the appropriate group that didn't get revascularization. That could be for a variety of reasons. Right. And they also looked at uncertain. And what's most important is they followed them out for three years and looked at their rates of death in myocardial infarction or acute coronary syndrome hospitalization and adjusted for other factors and, and found some things that I think are useful. First, they found that those patients that had an appropriate reason to get revascularization, those that did get revascularization had lower rates, statistically significant, even after adjustment of death or acute coronary syndromes. Uncertain had a similar trend, but was not statistically significant. And for the inappropriate group, they were similar. In fact, the rate of those events was a little higher in the patients wow. that got revascularization, but it wasn't statistically significant. So what does that tell me? You know, part of my editorial is about striking the right balance. We're trying to get the right procedure to the right patient for the right outcome. Right. And in order to do that, we have to have some framework of talking and thinking and doing our decision making. The appropriate use criteria aren't perfect, but I think they provide that framework. You know, we have to think about patients with regards to symptom complex, ischemic burden, coronary disease burden, medical therapy that they're getting. If you do that, this article shows us at least that the appropriate patients seem to do better when they get revascularization. And importantly, it may not be a change in death or MI for inappropriate, but since it's inappropriate for many of those patients because they're asymptomatic or they have low burden of CAD or low risk ischemia, if you can't make those patients feel better and you're not changing their death or MI with potentially a trend the other way, I think this article starts to help us realize that the big message is we should also be considering underuse opportunities to get these patients to revascularization, which may make them do better. What's the clinical message in an era of healthcare reform where we're all trying to save money? Yeah, so uh, I think, you know, if we just think about money, making people live longer doesn't save us money. And the health system is partly here because people are living to be 80, 90, yes. and 100. So the baby boom is part of why we're here. Remember, cardiovascular medicine, as cardiologists, we've reduced cardiovascular mortality 10% every year. And of course, that means older patients better, but that costs us more money. Right. So in the era of healthcare reform, we have to think about the best outcome for the patients that need it. And so I think what appropriate use criteria and this discussion will allow us to do is say, are we getting the most efficient and effective therapies to those patients that need it the most? And a lot of emphasis has been on overuse and saving money. Remember, underuse also means that we're going to make those patients do better. And if we took patients that may not need the procedures in the inappropriate group, shifted them to the patients that need them in the appropriate group, which tend to be higher risk, right. harder to do potentially, that's where we need to be focusing. I mean, the AUC, the fact that the parameter is in there for one reason or another doesn't mean you're going to end up with 100% of course on a, of these patients. So what, what can we say about the numbers that they found in Canada? Yeah, so uh, we can say a few things. I mean, of course, we recognize that a four-bullet description of any patient will not capture all the things that we see in medicine. But we want to look at patterns of care. And, and there's some consistent features now, at least with the AUC for revascularization. For the inappropriate group, it looks like somewhere between 10 to 14 percent, 12 percent, and 11.8 percent in the Chan paper. In this paper, elective angiography and angioplasty, or all of the angioplasties in coronary bypass surgery was around 
14 or 15 percent for PCI. So there's probably some stable rate based on how the, di di you know, the diagnosis of these patients is occurring that is inappropriate. We won't get to zero, but right. there's probably some rate that we're going to benchmark against. The same thing for appropriate. Even if it's appropriate, the patient may not want revascularization. They may have comorbidities. So it's not you they must. They have a say in this. Yeah, you, you, it's not a must do. It's providing you with the evidence and the best recommendation then to have the conversation with the patient. Well, this is uh, Manesh Patel, and the article is in Jack. It's the November 6th issue. You can read the Canadian uh, article, and then you can also read uh, his, his uh, editorial column. And uh, for Cardio Source World News, I'm Rick McGuire.